Hello, you wonderful people. We're going to continue our Astro Crash Course. This is part four, where we're going to take a look how to add JavaScript to make our mobile nav do something. So if we take a look at our website and we shrink to the smaller screen, you see our mobile nav pop up. But when I click on it, nothing happens. So in this video, we're going to write some basic vanilla JavaScript to fix this issue and allow our website to have a normal mobile website. So let's jump right into the code. And if you're watching this video on YouTube and you wanna get access to the code snippet, you'll see notes here in the description. If you click on it, it's gonna take you to the website. You don't need to sign up. I already have a dummy user account for you. If you don't want to, just click sign in and it's going to take you to your lessons. Now, if you do have an account, you'll have your lessons there you could save your progress but no big deal and you should see all the class notes necessary to allow you to find all the code snippets here in this project but with that being said back to our lesson in my terminal i'm going to go ahead and open my project and here we are in vs code i'm going to go ahead navigate to source and if we go to our components we have our main layout component and if we open it you're going to see our common code that we want to share on every page. We have our body tag, and then we have our navigation. And in between our navigation, we have the slot component that allows us to pass children. So if we go to our index page, you're going to see that we're using our main layout component and passing our sections that you see on our homepage. So if I start my application, here you see our top navigation that lives in our main layout. And then you see our hero section and our feature section. And that is what is represented by these components here. We'll get back to them in a later video, but for now, let's go back and jump into our main layout. Now our main layout may have other things, not just our top navigation. We could do whatever we like. So to make it more modular, let's go ahead, take all of this top navigation code. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. And inside our components folder, we're going to make a new file and we're going to call it topnav.astro. And this is exactly what we did in our previous video, learn about Astro components. In the future, we're gonna take a look how we could add data dynamically. But for now, we're going to add our front matter that we're going to deal in just a second. We're gonna paste in our top navigation code from before, and we're going to prepare to add our JavaScript which is going to live here in our script tags. What's awesome with Astro, you could literally write your JavaScript here. Now that we have our top nav Astro component, let's go ahead back to our main layout and let's go ahead, import our top nav. And don't forget to import it here on the top. And notice how through making and reusable components, we are able to make our code look nicer. So instead of having to work in our main layout, if I wanna make any changes in the top nav where the code lives, I could go ahead into that component, which is pretty awesome. So if you take a look at our site, our top navigation still works as expected. So now let's go ahead and work on our mobile navigation. I'm gonna go ahead and inspect. Now, in order to make our navigation work, we wanna be able to add an unclick onto our button. So if we take a look, we have our navbar hamburger button. So what we wanna do is we wanna add an unclick event that's going to either show or hide our menu. Now scrolling down, we're going to see our navbar menu and notice how at the moment it has a class hidden. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove it for now and notice how our top navigation appears. So what we wanna do is on our unclick event, we want to toggle the div with the class navbar menu to either be hidden or show. And what we wanna do, we wanna do a couple of different things in terms of functionality. We wanna be able to click on this gray area to close our menu. We wanna click on the X to close our menu. So let's start with the basics. So back in our top nav Astro component, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to this navbar burger button. So the first thing you wanna do, we want to target this button by the class name so we have access to it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom. And whenever working with JavaScript, one of the best resources or in just general web in general is going to the developer Mozilla network. And here we're going to start by adding a document content loader event. And what it does, it fires when all the HTML has been completely parsed and all the scripts have been loaded. So we're gonna use that as a check to make sure that our page is loaded before we 
continue with the process. So here we see an example at event listener called DOM content loaded to which we pass some function. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do document and paste in that code snippet. So now scrolling to the top, let's find our button that we want to target. Let's go ahead and do that now. So back in our code here, and we're going to do const burger use document.query selector because we're using TypeScript. We're saying that this is a HTML button element and we're targeting our nav bar. Now, before we select any of the other elements required, let's add a function that we're going to call toggle menu. And for now, we're just going to say that we want to alert and we're going to say hello. Now that we have our burger element selected and we have a simple function that we want to call on an unclicked, let's now go ahead and add a event listener to our onclick, which is gonna fire our toggle menu when we click. So to quick recap, if you scroll to the top, we have our button with a class navbar burger. We went ahead and selected our button based on the class name. Then we created a function that just gonna say alert hello, and we added an event listener on the event that we selected that adds an onclick listener that will fire this toggle menu function. So now back in our website, when I click our button, we see our alert box output with our hello, which is triggered by this event listener. If we scroll back up, we're going to see our div with a navbar menu class, which has an element hidden. What we want to do is toggle this hidden attribute whenever we click that button. So let's go ahead and select this div with the navbar menu class name. And then let's go ahead and toggle the hidden class every time we click the button. So now we could delete this alert and let's test it out. So now when I click, notice that we have our menu show up. So now what we wanna do, we wanna be able to target this background. So when I click on it, right now nothing happens, it closes. And we also wanna do the same thing when we click the X button, we want our menu to close. So let's go ahead and target those elements. In our code, back scrolling to the top, we see that we have a div with a navbar backdrop, which is our backdrop. So we're gonna go ahead and target it so we could add an unclick event on that backdrop. So I'm gonna say const backdrop equals document that query selector, and we're targeting that div element, and we're targeting it based on the class name. Now we repeat our pattern, and we get the backdrop, and we add that unclick event listener, so whenever we click on that backdrop, it's gonna toggle the hidden class. And I hope you're starting to see the pattern. So now, when I click the burger, it opens. Now, when I should click on the backdrop, it should close the menu. And that's working as expected. And now we're gonna repeat that same pattern for the X button. Scrolling back to our code, you're going to see that we have a button with a class navbar close. So back here on the bottom, we're going to target our close button and we're targeting it based on the navbar close class. And you guessed it, we're going to repeat that same pattern by adding an event listener on click to close the menu whenever we click the X. So the basic pattern, target the element, create a function that's gonna run on that click, add an event listener, and fire that function. Nice, so now we're able to open our menu and be able to close our menu, either clicking the backdrop or the X, and we are able to navigate to all the different pages. Really awesome. So taking a look at the code, the basic pattern to recap is select an element. In this case, we selected our button with the navbar burger class. Then we added an event listener, and then we pass a function that we wanna call on that click event. And because we're not using the event, we could remove it. But for a quick recap, the general idea, whenever using vanilla JavaScript, typically what you would do is you will select the appropriate HTML element that you need. In this case, it was the hamburger button with the class of navbar burger. Then we add a function that does some sort of action. In our case, we selected the menu and our navbar menu had a class name hidden, which hides the menu or shows it. And what we're doing is we're using class list with the method toggle to toggle that class name from hidden to show. And we're adding an event listener to our burger button and on click when we press it, it's gonna fire our toggle menu button. So in this case, when we take a look, every time we click our button, it fires our toggle menu function and it toggles our navbar from being hidden to being shown. 
And this is the power of Astro, is that you're able to write simple vanilla JavaScript to add basic dynamic functionality to your project. Now that our top navigation works, in the next video, we're going to take a look how we could create a single nav item component to represent each item. And we want to be able to use it in our mobile menu as well as in our regular menu. And you notice that the styling is slightly different. So how can we make it flexible enough where we're able to pass the same component, reuse it in multiple places and change the behavior via props. So that's what we're going to cover in next video. I'll see you there.